that we, like the workers, were the union. And I learned that if we succeeded, we'd be able to negotiate as equals with the administration and senior management. Whereas before we voted to form our union, decisions were made for us. Hi, I'm Katie with the Department for Professional Employees, AFL-CIO. And I'm here uh, with Kate, a um, RN educator at the uh, Central Vermont Medical Center. Kate, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your work, and your union? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I work as a nurse educator at Central Vermont Medical Center. Um, I've been an RN since 04, and I've been at this organization since early 2015. Um, and my work really centered around um, education, orientation, and training. Um, and yeah, I got involved in the union organizing effort um, in December of last year. Um, that's that's great to hear. And uh, what what led you and your coworkers to form a a union um, in your workplace? And what were some of the issues that inspired your organizing drive? Yeah. So um, really, I think what it came down to is there were sort of consistent challenges, you know, across departments and across different roles. Um, where people were had a lot of concerns about safety, safe staffing, um, feeling like they weren't able to provide the kind of care that they wanted to provide, um, challenges around compensation, um, and challenges around retention, you know, seeing like a ton, a ton of turnover, which is a big challenge. Um, and, you know, one of the big things that happens sort of like, you know, post peak COVID in the healthcare world is that, um, you know, doing travel nursing or travel healthcare assignments became really, really lucrative. And a lot of folks, you know, left to take those assignments because they were incredibly, you know, financially rewarding. Um, and what happened was like, we lost a lot of people who went to do travel assignments. Consequently, we, those vacancies were filled with a lot of travel staff, which they're great. Like they're wonderful. Um, and there was also a lot of, you know, I would say like a lot of friction when you realize that you're working next to someone doing the same exact job as you, and they're making just a shockingly higher amount of money than you are. So that was a real source of friction for people. Um, and, you know, I'd say that like, you know, while the details kind of varied like unit to unit, role to role, um, the big picture thing that we kept hearing from folks was, I want to be able to do this job in a way that feels good. Um, I want to keep my patients safe. I want to keep my residents safe. And I, you know, when I have to, when I'm forced to make a decision between like, hmm, can I go eat a meal or go to the bathroom? If I do that, will my patient be unsafe while I'm gone? If if I go, if I go have lunch, will my patient's pain be unmedicated? You know, if I choose to go to the bathroom, will my patient be sitting, you know, in a brief that needs to be changed for much longer? And, you know, those those cumulative challenges when it happens multiple times a day, every day for months and years on end, really, really cause problems. Yeah. And so um, how many, uh, how many nurses are in your union and um, what, uh, what union did you organize with? Yeah. So, um, and, you know, I'll just give the disclaimer with all of this that like, Obviously, I'm not an organizing expert. I'm somebody who's been in this world for about a year. And so I've got this recent lived experience, you know, working as working on an organizing campaign um, as, as a staff member, as a, as a nurse, like a member of the union. Um, so we chose to organize with AFT Vermont. Um, and, you know, we know that they support a lot of the other healthcare unions in our state um, and the other healthcare unions that are within our like health network that our hospital is a larger part of. So we organized with AFT Vermont and we started out with just the RNs, just the registered nurses organizing, um, but the campaign actually grew and expanded so that we had two different bargaining units. Um, so we had two simultaneous campaigns running, you know, parallel um, and we had two simultaneous elections. So we had um, about, let's see, about 170 technical professionals. That was one bargaining unit. And our RN numbers are um, about 380 RNs. So those were the two bargaining units that organized, um, you know, won our, camp won our campaign and won our vote in August. And um, how did you become involved in the organizing effort? Like what, uh, you know, 
personally, like, how did you get connected with uh, the union and, and starting to help out talking to your fellow, uh, your fellow nurses? Yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really organic. Um, you know, a friend, a coworker approached me at work and was like, Hey, I've been kind of talking to some people, um, you know, wondering if you have an interest in like learning more about forming a union. And at that point, a few folks were interested. Um, you know, my coworker, a fellow RN, she linked me up with, um, a staff member from AFT Vermont. I think the next thing that we did was like, we had a group zoom with some other folks, you know, from my department who had an interest where we kind of learned more about the process. Um, and that kind of like moved into in-person meetings and everything kind of just flowed from there. And, and so, um, yeah, you, you mentioned that in August, you won your union election. Um, how, how has your workplace already changed in that short period of time since, you know, winning your union election? Yeah, so it was, it's been really, really interesting. Um, you know, I think since the union election, um, one of the big things that has changed is that, you know, immediately after we won the election, even before we have, you know, even before we started bargaining our contract, one of the first thing that happens when you win your union is you are um, entitled to wine garden rights, um, which is where you are legally allowed to bring a union member with you towards any into any meeting that you're having with like a manager or a supervisor that is a disciplinary meeting or could potentially be a disciplinary meeting. Um, so that's been a great way for staff to feel really, really supported. I've I've gone and been that person for some teammates who, you know, were having a meeting with management and they said, hey, I want a union member there with me, you know, to support me and help me ask questions. So we got that right immediately, which has been great. Um, and, you know, bargaining has started. We elected our bargaining reps. Um, we circulated a bargaining survey to understand what priorities are. And that's really helped to continue to make connections between departments, you know, because the landscape does vary department to, to department, unit to unit, while there are like some big themes that, um, you know, that are sort of like, you know, challenging throughout. Um, some of the details are different. You know, some departments, their staffing is actually pretty good. Some departments have like a manager that they love and that's doing really good work. Um, but it's been really helpful for people to, to look up, to sort of look across the larger organization and say, huh, X, Y, and Z is happening over there. And I didn't know about that. And now that I know about it, I want to make a change about it. And so it's really like sort of open the lines of communications. Um, and just helping people to understand, like, what's the bigger landscape for for the community as a whole? Can you talk about what it was like going through the union union organizing process? Um, and yeah, just share like your experience with other professionals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so it was really interesting, you know. And in hindsight, I think it's kind of funny that I've been an RN for like the better part of twenty years. And I'd never worked, you know, in a union facility before. Um, so I really came in with no knowledge of union organizing, um, even though I've been in healthcare for a really long time. And so I didn't know, you know, the details about what unions could accomplish. Um, and so for me, going through the process, you know, I really, I learned a lot. I asked a lot of questions. Um, and I learned that we, like the workers were the union. And I learned that if we succeeded, we'd be able to negotiate as equals with the administration and senior management. Whereas before we voted to form our union, decisions were made for us without meaningful input. Now we're equals at the bargaining table. Um, you know, and on like sort of a log logistical side of things, like I gained an understanding of how to have conversations with coworkers, you know, how to identify issues and challenges, you know, how to build consensus. Um, you know, we articulated our vision with a mission statement. We created a mission statement for our union. And then, um, you know, I, I started to understand our, our AFT Vermont organizers, you know, they showed us sort of like the roadmap to your union and there's all these different milestones along the way that happen. And so, for me, I got to like learn and sort of live those different milestones. So one of the first milestones was like creating our mission statement. One of the ne next milestones was like circulating our mission statement for people to sign on to it and say, yeah, I agree with this. I want this sort of big picture goal. And then another milestone was having people sign an authorization card. So authorization for representation um, by AFT Vermont. 
you know, another milestone was filing for our election with the National Labor Relations Board. Um, we moved on to our vote yes poster where people publicly, you know, signed onto this poster that said, yes, you know, me, Kate, I'm voting yes. Uh, really as a way to like sort of build momentum and help people feel really, really strong and confident in their yes. Um, moved on to our election, moved on to our bargaining reps, now in bargaining. And so for me, you know, I really learned how to talk to people about the union. I learned how to critically think about what we have to gain. And, you know, truthfully, I think my back with my background as an educator, like I love, I love like, you know, thinking about critical thinking and thinking about what are the right questions to ask so that we can actually affect some real change. Um, and, you know, I think for me going through the, the union organizing process, the thing that I come away from it with is like, it's really easy to say no to something when you don't fully understand what it could actually offer. Um, and so part of the union organizing process was helping people understand what can a union actually do for you? Um, and what's at stake for you and your community if you don't, if you don't take this work on? Well, that, that's, uh, that's, that's really insightful and, and great to hear. And how, you know, the, as you, as you explained, the union organizing process is kind of, it's long and, and can be complicated. Um, so how did you and your coworkers stay united while forming your union? Yeah, you know, I think it was there, there were definitely some challenging times. Um, you know, it was definitely a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, and I would say like one way that we stayed united while forming our union was, you know, by staying really focused on the goal. Um, you know, like just, you know, it's so easy to have somebody sort of like knock you off your path or knock you off balance a little bit. And then like, you know, our our um, support from AFT Vermont, like, you know, I, I'm sure that they said to me probably literally like 500 times, like, do, do we want to change the way decisions in our workplace are made? Like, that's really the ultimate question and the ultimate goal. So even though you have these bumps in the road, if you can kind of reorient yourself to like, that's the big question. Do I want to change the way decisions in my workplace are made? And what's at stake here? Um, you know, logistically, we kept in close communication with the coworkers that were on the organizing committee with us. Um, and, you know, just lots of conversations, um, you know, meetings, Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, phone calls, you know, meeting with people at coffee shops, like, you know, swinging by people's houses to have conversations. Um, you know, logistically, you know, we, I, we even like, I think we went to Applebee's one night and like, you know, sort of had like a drop-in info session. So like stuff like that. Um, and, you know, for the organizing committee, for sort of our core group, we had a group chat that we used where we could, you know, share questions, experiences, our AFT Vermont um, folks would chime in with guidance. Um, you know, because the process was definitely, there were times when it was emotionally taxing. Um, and there was a lot of energy that, you know, needed to um, be directed towards dispelling um, misinformation and myths, you know. And sometimes when this misinformation or myths would bubble up, like sometimes it was just an honest lack of knowledge from people. But also there was a lot of really targeted misinformation coming from management trying to scare people into not organizing. But at the end of the day, we had a lot of support. I'm close with many of the organizing committee members still, you know, um, we formed a really great bond. Yeah. And, you know, so for other folks who are considering um, forming a union or just beginning to go for the union organizing process, what advice would you give them, um, you know, to prepare them um, as they, you know, start forming their union? Yeah, I think, you know, if it's something that you're not familiar with, it, it initially it feels like this big nebulous goal. You're like, oh, I'm here and we want to form a union and that's over there. And so how do you get from here to here? Um, and, you know, really, I would say like, you know, for a lot of professionals, like a lot of professionals are familiar with the concept of project management and union organizing is a, it's a big project. You know, you have milestones and targets. And I think if you frame it as project management, that's one way for um, folks that might have a lot of really relevant professional experience to sort of wrap your arms around it. Um, you know, compared to some of like your standard projects that you might be working on, there might be more input, there might be more stakeholders than you're used to. Um, so, you know, that might take a little bit of adjustment, but that's really the goal of union organizing is to have like meaningful input from the group that is really heard and implemented. 
Um, I'd also say that like union organizing is probably more emotionally charged than like traditional project management. Um, you know, and I think that's because the whole process of union organizing is navigating relationships between humans. Um, and, you know, talking about like what people want and desire. And so there are times when that does become emotionally charged. And I don't know, I think like, sometimes I tell myself like, well, if we get to, if we, when we got to a point where things are emotionally charged and like, I guess we must be doing it right. Because like, we got to, we got to a point where, um, you know, people were really feeling strongly. Um, so that kind of, you know, showed me that like, I think we're on the right track here because we're, we're, we're bumping up against something that feels important. Um, you know, I'd also say like you, you might start down this road with like, you know, what, like one or like a handful of issues or challenges that's uniting your group. And I do think it's important to, um, to be able to articulate those, those individual issues and also at the same time, be able to like sort of zoom out and see what are the bigger patterns and what are the bigger power dynamics at play? Um, so kind of balancing between like, what are your smaller goals? And then like, what are your bigger picture sort of overarching goals? And at the end of the day, I think that like, if you're, if you're going through the union process, the thing that you're going to come back to over and over and over again is where is your current balance of power? And is that power balance, is it serving you? Is it serving your stakeholders? You know, is it serving whatever your industry is? Is it serving your patients, your students, your clients? Um, and I think at the end of the day, that question um, really helped us sort of like, you know, just drive our process forward and keep our eye on the goal. Yeah. And so now, now you're, uh, you know, you're through your union election and you are negotiating or your um, coworkers are negotiating your first uh, union contract. Yep. Can you talk about some of the the goals of your first contract and and yeah, what what you hope you to achieve with your um, you know, voice at the table? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, throughout our whole organizing process, we heard from folks about the things that were important to them and I will say like some, you know, some really consistent themes emerged and those themes were really re reflected and the results that we got when we circulated our bargaining survey. So after we won our election, we circulated a really comprehensive survey to um, to our members. And that's where we asked people like, hey, what's important to you? What's a priority for you? What's a problem for you? You know, what do you want to focus on? And our bargaining team members were able to sort of like take all of that data from the surveys and, you know, use that to say, oh, you know, all these people want X, all these people want Y, like let's focus on those. Obviously there's a million things that would be great to do. And, you know, in order to be realistic, you, I, I think that you have to sort of like pick and choose and prioritize some of, you know, what are the things you wanna do first? And so, um, you know, one of the first things that people are really looking for is transparency around the wage scale. You know, prior to forming our union, um, it was all sort of like smoke and mirrors and like kind of behind closed doors, like, oh, you've been an RN for 11 years, but I've been an RN for 11 years, but what are we, we're not making the same, like, what's the story there? Um, so people are really looking for a transparent wage scale that says, if I've been an RN for this number of years, this is what I make. And next year I'll make this and next year I'll make that. Um, also with a focus on really bringing our com compensation into the more competitive range. You know, when we think about how cost of living has shifted over the last few years, um, you know, the small sort of salary adjustments people have gotten at our organization in no way kept up with, um, you know, increases in cost of living. Um, we're also really looking at safe staffing um, and making sure that, you know, all of our units, all of our departments are have the appropriate staffing levels to provide really safe, high quality care. And our goal really is for those um, safe staffing plans, or sometimes you hear the word like safe staff, like staffing grid. So the goal is to have those staffing models have meaningful input from the people who are actually doing the work, not from administrators that are like, you know, a million miles away and don't actually understand the level of complexity um, involved when you're trying to provide care for, you know, five acutely ill patients on the medical surgical floor. Um, so we're really looking forward to um, implementing some safe staffing models with meaningful input from the staff doing the work. That's that those, those all sound like great goals. Um, 
And is there anything else you'd like to add before we conclude our, our interview today? Um, yeah, I just, I guess I would just add like, thanks for, for chatting with me. I think this is such an interesting topic. Um, and I think it's something that is really, at least in our neck of the woods, it's really gaining a lot of momentum. You know, we're seeing a lot of growth in conversations in different, different industries around Vermont with folks having an interest in forming a union. Um, and I think it's great. I think that a lot of people are kind of waking up and realizing that the balance of power isn't really sh where it should be. Um, and I'm really excited to see people sort of open their eyes and start to say, I think I'm going to take back some of that power. I don't think the I don't think the status quo is working for many people. Um, and so, you know, even just like yesterday, I was talking with someone who works as a um, a medical assistant and she's just 19 years old and she was like this is my first job and I've been doing it for like one and a half years and like I'm already super burnt out and I don't know how much longer I can do this for um and you know I think I, I wish that she hadn't had that experience and also it's really wonderful to see people especially people like you know young in their careers um, just sort of realize that like, you know, this is not a long-term plan the way things are right now. It's not, it's certainly not serving the workers. It's definitely not serving the patients. You know, maybe it's working for some upper administrators and like health insurance executives, but, like in terms of the people who are actually trying to get care, it's not working. So it's really inspiring to hear people say, yeah, I'm ready to make a change. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Kate. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was great to talk. Yeah.